Hey everyone, this is CJ. I'm going to present on the main work, NeuroView neuro RNN. So then in the beginning, we just wanna talk about how deep learning has become very prevalent. It's been utilized in computer vision, natural language processing, and so on. The main reason is that the performance is really good for you have an input and then an output is produced with the deep network. So it's considered a black box. So the situation is when it works, it works, but result-based analysis is not enough because when you have medical imaging or autonomous driving, you want to understand where it's going to break and why is it making these decisions. So and that's why we want to do interpretability and explainability. And within the literature, there are a lot of different terms. So in this case, we are going to be very concrete and provide these two definitions. Interpretability means can be understood by a human. Explainability means can be stated in a mathematical formal manner, such as an equation. So then we're going to use this motivation to show why interpretability and explainability is important. In this scenario, we have a deep network that's going to be trained as an animal classifier. We have this cute corgi beagle dog where we have multiple images and we send it through the network and it'll classify it as a dog. So when it works, it works. But then in the same scenario, we're going to take the same dog and put a shark suit on. In this case, what is going to happen? Is it going to classify as a dog, a shark, a pup? So in these scenarios, we want to understand when it's not working, how can we probe inside and figure out where is it not working or what parts are making it make a wrong decision or a correct decision, especially in this case, if it's classifying as a dog, is it focusing on the head rather than the shark, the shark part? So then for NeuroView RNN, we focus more on the recurrent neural networks and we construct an RNN such that now we're gonna explain the classification with respect to the, all the hidden state units in a formal manner, such that we concatenate all the hidden states and have it as input to the linear classifier. This is different from a regular RNN where you just use the last hidden state. So we're gonna have this linear mapping and that prediction, which is categorized as Y, is gonna be the concatenation of all the hidden states times the class weights which is a parameter from the linear classifier. This is the explainability that we want. This is something that a typical recurrent neural net cannot provide, but with us, this is how we can map it back. And so we can look at the time steps. And then we're going to also exhibit mostly on par performance. So then here's a tradi traditional recurrent neural network diagram where you have the input, then you have all the hidden states through the different time steps. And then the last hidden state will will be sent as the input to the linear classifier and it'll create the prediction or classification. But in the NeuroView RNN diagram, this is where things are going to change, where now instead of using the last hidden state, what we do is concatenate all of the hidden states into the linear classifier, thus with all the weights that are being learned in that linear classifier portion, we can map it back and see what the weight values are. This is the explainability where we can relate how all of them work as opposed to a traditional one where you just have the last hidden state and you can't really relate how it, how all the previous hidden states helped with the linear classification because you only have the last hidden state. In this case, this is how we can provide that explainability. Yes, there's an additional amount of overhead, but in most cases with the data sets that we use, it, there wasn't that much, that much of computational overhead. So then for the NeuroView RNN performance, we are able to perform on par with 20 different time series classification data sets. And then we did have a small drop in the IMDB movie review sentiment classification. The main issue was the zero padding issue because we had variable length reviews. And then we also performed on par with the UCF11 video action recognition data set where we had a combination of a convolutional neural network and a recurrent neural network in the NeuroView style version where we had all of the units concatenated, not just the hidden state units. So in this scenario, once we do the training, we take the weights from the linear classifier and we can just visualize for all the time steps to see which time steps are very important in a positive manner and which ones are in a negative manner. In this case, with the rock data set, we look at class zero and we can see which time steps have have the positive time steps based on the heat map and which ones are negative. So you can map back to the data and see, is it focusing on portions of the input that you wanted to focus on? If not, you can be able to explain and see, okay, this is what it's doing. And we can think about if it's not focusing on the right parts we want and maybe try different learning mechanisms so that it can focus on those aspects. 
And so by looking at those weights, those weight values from the linear classifier based on the concatenation of the hidden states, we can use those weights on other domains or applications to help provide additional understanding and scenarios where they weren't able to in different manners. And so in these case studies, we'll be looking at class similarities based on the weight values, bidirectional RNNs, sentiment analysis, and video action recognition. So in this first example, we have the fungi data set where we had three different classes. There were about 18 classes in, in total. But in this case, we take the weight values that were from the linear classifier and we sum up the hidden state values and now we have all the time steps. And by applying a cosine similarity, we can assess which classes are very similar. So in this case, if you look at class five and class 16, they are much more similar and you can identify and see which aspects look very similar since their cosine similarity was very high. But if you look, class five and class nine, had a very negative cosine similarity because if you look at the at the neuroview view construction, the concatenation of the hidden states is going to be the same for all the classes. It's just what the class weights are. It's going to help determine which of the class for that input, which classes are going to decide it. So imagine you have an input and you see that it was meant for class five. You can see why it would misclassify for it could be misclassified for class 16 based on how the input looks like and how the appropriation of the weight values are. But if you look at class nine, it's very dissimilar to class five and you can inspect and look at the weight values and which portions are positive and which portions are negative. So this provides additional explainability that makes it easier to understand. The same thing is that for a bidirectional RNN, for a regular RNN, it's only going in the forward mechanism in a causal manner, but for a bidirectional RNN, it's taking both the forward causal mechanism and then the backward mechanism where it's going non-causal so then you have two directions and in one scenario for for the community it was saying that for the forward and backward are they going to be focusing on the same time steps because for a traditional recurrent neural network that has a bi-directional mechanism it's really difficult to understand that but with neuroview we can transform it into the neuroview version and we can inspect for the rock class for class zero, we have the, the top portion which shows it for just a just for a traditional neuro view, neuro view gated recurrent unit, and you can see what it's focusing on. But if you have this forward and backward bidirectionalness, you can see that the forward and the backward are not focusing on the same time steps. So this helps disprove if they, if it's going to be symmetrical. And in this case, it helps to understand. Okay, we can see that we're one. The forward is looking at these time steps with higher weight values while the backward is looking at these time steps and it helps provide additional understanding. So then with sentiment analysis, in this case we use the IMDB movie review where if the sentiment was positive or negative. And here we we use the word to vec embedding where it tokenized the, the input words into a, into, a, into a dimensional vector and then we use it as the input and so we see that the weight values are very in a, stuck, in a staccato manner where you see from the next time step, you can see one becoming positive and the next one becoming negative. And it makes a lot of sense since the word embeddings of words are gonna be very different and not smooth because you have different words that are different parts of speeches. So then you can see why the weight values are not as smooth or consistent compared to the time series data sets. And in this negative class, we can look at the time steps and map back to the words and see for some example reviews, we can see what are they looking at. So for the negative class, which is a negative sentiment, we saw we saw that the weight values that are that were very high, we looked at the words and a lot of some of them looked at bad, dodgy, unpleasant, pointless, which makes a lot of sense with the negative sentiment class, because if you're if you're wanting to see what words or what time steps are it's focusing that, you would think that they would be words that denote negative sentiment. And this was the same case as well for the positive sentiment where we looked at words like good, terrific. So then for video action recognition, this one was interesting because we're using a fusion of the CNN and the RNN where, this, where the convolutional neural net takes the video frames as the input and then the, the recurrent neural net will use the features from the, the convolutional neural net. So then in this case, we have spatial and temporal. And is there any type of biases that are incorporated into this? Because with the input to the linear classifier being both spatial and temporal units, what is the weight prioritization going to focus on? And for some of the classes that we saw, it would have more positive values 
with the class weights on the convolutional neural net compared to the recurrent neural net. And this makes a little bit more sense because for action recognition, there seems to be more bias on the spatial features because for some classes, there may not be a lot of diverse video. So the, the easy way is to look at the spatial units. And if there is going to only be a specific background, then it's probably going to hone in on that. And so it does make a lot of sense that in this case, if we have two different networks being used together, it's going to be focusing on this on the convolutional instead of the recurrent. So this is important to understand to see does as ideally you would want both both the convolutional and the recurrent to have positive weights. But looking at this slide, we have we had a convolutional neural net of three layers, and then we had a, a gated recurrent unit as the as the recurrent neural network, and we saw that in this scenario for the time step weights for the gated recurrent unit, they're all negative. But in the first layer the, in this convolutional neural net, they were some of them were positive. Yes, you had the second and the third layer being negative, but you still had more convolutional neural net units being positive versus the gated recurrent unit. So in this case, the spatial units had more positive values compared to the net to the recurrent neural network with the time steps for the temporal units being negative. So we can think about this could lead to further implications such as such as why would you want negative time step weights on uh, on temporal units so this is just just showing that there could be further implications that could be future work that we focus on later on 